When it comes to switching to Linux, many think that it's a good idea to ease users into this new experience by providing a more or less similar experience like they had on Windows. However, besides the commonly recommended desktop environments KDE Plasma and Cinnamon, which already kind of look similar to Windows by default, from time to time you see a new distro or different desktop environment that tries to essentially clone Windows altogether. But this might not actually be that good of an idea, and here's why. In today's video, we are going to talk about the idea of providing users with an experience that they already know, why those distros and desktop environments typically don't last, and why I think that this approach in general is not really that good. And let's get straight into it. One of the major problems of providing users with an experience that they already know is that they kind of expect it to work the same. While it's true that a similar layout, icons, maybe the settings menu and similar can help the user find their way around the operating system, as soon as they require a feature or application that doesn't exist, Linux may feel like Windows, but this just makes it look like a worse version of it. It's actually one of the reasons on why I prefer to recommend GNOME to newcomers instead of something like KDE Plasma. Right off the bat, it kind of forces the users to engage in this vastly different desktop experience that heavily emphasizes the use of workspaces and a top panel instead of a typical taskbar. You might think to yourself that this could throw off users at first, and in terms of muscle memory, it does. However, the learning process is much different, because they just don't expect it to behave like Windows. In my opinion, this is a good thing, since if you view Linux as its standalone thing, then you might realize that for your use cases it's more than enough. You focus on learning the interface, which applications work and which don't, and you can change the experience to fit your own personal needs. If it ends up looking like Windows anyway, then so be it, but the whole baseline from where you started wasn't measured directly against Windows. In my opinion, a good thing. Anyway, let's circle back a bit. Distributions or desktop environments that feature certain inspirations from Windows or are just generally going into the same direction is one thing. However, let's quickly talk about the clones a bit. There are some that kind of look like a different version of Windows in their own light. Distros that are typically meant to actually replace it with something that feels equally good. And then there are those that try to just straight off copy it, and those could become a problem for a couple of reasons. First of all, support. Usually, a lot of these copy distros only consist of a couple of maintainers that base their Linux operating system off another one, and if it isn't properly maintained, you either end up with a less stable or in some cases even an insecure operating system, especially if the libraries for desktop apps feature some outdated dependency. On top of that, some of these distributions might not properly follow open source guidelines, which could have heavy consequences on the development and therefore yourself if you are using one of them. And I think that if those distributions were to actually grow, have a full dedicated team behind them and do everything right on the open source end, then Microsoft might not be too pleased with them ripping off their design in such a way, which could lead to the project being shut down anyway. I was never really a fan of distributions that try to ease the user into Linux by pretending to be something that is just not. Especially since those distributions also kind of go too far, like providing their own desktop apps that are half-baked, so you essentially end up with a similar settings nightmare that GNOME and Windows are still faced with. Two or three different apps, just to adjust some basic functionality. Like I've said it before, but a Linux Windows clone is just going to make it look like it's a worse version of Windows. The only thing that you might not get are some integrations or ads. However, not even that is true for every distribution, leaving you with… what's even the point? And history has proven that operating systems do not need to be similar to each other in order to be usable and perceived as such. MacOS and Windows function completely differently, for example. You don't install applications the same way, the taskbar is positioned somewhere else, integrated differently with programs, and some features, which many consider basic, were not integrated into the desktop for a long time. But that didn't stop its users from still using it. Or let's just compare different form factors. Android vs iOS, for example. Those mobile operating systems are completely different and couldn't be directly compared. In fact, a direct comparison was one of the reasons on why the Windows Phone never really made it far. It was Windows, but worse, so it never really got the chance to develop. Linux desktop environments cannot and should not be compared to Windows directly in terms of expecting it to work the same. You can compare visuals, the overall feature set, but definitely not the way how you exactly operate it. And this is in my opinion the thing that counts most. 
When I started using GNOME, it was initially just out of curiosity, but ironically it felt closer to Windows than KDE Plasma because its shortcuts are pretty similar out of the box, and I heavily relied on that. But since it behaves different from Windows in every other way, I never really had any bias to compare the desktop as of itself. Sure, I could have said that this or that app is not compatible, but the desktop comparison itself was isolated. And it actually left me with an even more impressive view on Linux. Just something as simple as starting Steam for the first time gives you a slight whoa effect. Since even though you might already know that games are compatible, this makes it real and you can view Linux in its very own light. It's no longer, yeah some stuff works on it, it doesn't look as nice or I can't find my settings on it. If your desktop experience is different enough, then you start seeing the what could be instead of the yeah, why even bother with it? And this makes Linux so fun to use. Over time, your viewpoint on this changes anyway, and at some point you do end up finding your own personal preferences, even if those were a Windows-like experience. But the important point is that we shouldn't compare Linux to Windows, because it's just not. Technically even something new when it comes to mass adoption. Windows desktop clones are in my opinion not the way to go, but rather something more authentic. Be that a GNOME, a KD Plasma or a Cinnamon. They are different enough that they might not be directly compared to Windows and this serves as a better base to build your own opinion on Linux. Maybe you realize that you didn't actually use as many Windows exclusive features as you might have thought. Maybe you see the potential of Linux and are willing to compromise something to preserve control over your operating system. Or maybe it just ends up working for you anyway. My personal advice is to not start off with one of those Windows themed like distributions. The direct comparison will eventually hurt your own opinion on Linux, since you just cannot focus on the things that it's actually good at. To give you more control and freedom. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of Linux distros or desktop environments that are trying to essentially clone Windows? Is your viewpoint on this similar to mine, or do you think that something like this is actually required? I would be happy to read your thoughts on this matter in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.